Oh, hey, welcome back everyone. Today I have, well, <laughs> this is pretty insane. Today we'll be looking at something totally different with the RELV Eclipse Thermal Hide. And this is totally new and I wanna see if it actually works to make us disappear. <laughs> so let's find out. All right, let's get started. So first, I see a lot of really cool gear, like a lot, from night vision optics to scopes and sometimes gear that isn't even released yet. And it's definitely fun to see it all, but it certainly surprised not Jason when I told him that this thermal hide was probably the coolest thing I've seen to date. And let me explain to you why. If you can defeat all three visual spectrums, you'd basically be invisible to any 20th century adversary. And that's pretty huge. By visual spectrums, I mean visual with the naked eye, visible through IR illuminated night vision, and thermal heat signature. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who's already halfway through their comment about how those $3 hypothermia blankets can actually block heat due to the way they reflect light. And yes, they can, but it doesn't defeat normal vision. So yeah, you'd be invisible to like thermal, but if anybody looked over there, they'd be this big, huge silver sheet just <laughs> in the woods. So no, that doesn't work. But before I get way into the weeds about all this stuff, let's take a minute and talk about who RELV is. RELV was founded in 2017 and touts their mission as creating weaponized camouflage solutions to give you innovative and effective ways to conceal you in any environment. And I did ask the owner of RELV if the Eclipse was Barry compliant, and he did say that it was, but being Barry compliant isn't listed on the website anywhere, which is kind of odd. One more small caveat we'll put on the use of the RELV Thermal Eclipse is that's for the purpose of engagement, reconnaissance, or defense from a near-peer adversary. Like if some actual country invaded like we see in Ukraine. And it kind of aligns with that RELV mission of weaponized camo to allow you to engage or do recon without any concern of ever being spotted. And I want to add this, as escape and evasion situations where engagement isn't needed, well, a simple poncho works perfectly to hide a heat signature. And it also gives you great cover from the elements. So the poncho is great for survival, but you, know, you, you can't see through it at all. Whereas the RELV gives you offensive and intel gathering capabilities. And yes, you can drape it over a rifle scope and still see through the scope easily. Let me show you the hide up close and personal before we do some testing though. Here we see the RELV Eclipse thermal hide is made of a single sheet of material that is about eight feet long by about five feet wide. The fabric features two different camo pattern designs and I went with the tonal rat on one side and the Moab on the other. And the plan is to match that Moab side with that tracer tactical chest rig that I have in a future video. But being able to swap sides to match whatever visual pattern is needed is absolutely great. The hide also uses laser cut leaf style shapes in order to help break up your visual and thermal outline of your body. The fabric is also thin and light so it can easily be carried and stored. The fabric is also designed to rip away easily so it won't get caught on or snagged on branches. And I'm just excited to see if it even works at all. So what we'll do is we'll test it and we'll see if we can actually be invisible from all three visual spectrums that we mentioned earlier. We'll do a few tests of visible light, then move to nighttime IR testing, and then we'll finish up with the thermal part. And I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different as I'm actually gonna watch the footage alongside of you and then make comments as to how effective it is in each of the different visual spectrums. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, not Jason. Remember that RELV video I told you about? You mean that thermal hide you wouldn't stop talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, but I have a small problem. I'm at the part of the video where I have to do thermal testing, but I don't have any thermal cameras. You uh, got any ideas? Yeah, dude, I don't know. I'm a little busy with my own videos. Why don't you call Pulsar or something? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll just try calling them. Just call Pulsar. What, like the 1-800 number? One eternity later. So we've got thermals now, and I, 
I think I know how to use this. I don't, but we'll wing it, and I'll actually review this Pulsar XG35 later on too. But seriously, big thanks to Pulsar for getting us some equipment so we can test out this thermal hide, see if it actually works. So tell you what though, let me go put all my gear on and then we'll go test this out in the visual and the heat spectrum at distance. All right, so let's take a look at this footage together. So here on the bottom is my normal camera. We're about like 30 feet away. On the top is the thermal. It has about 2.5 in uh, magnification. So it's gonna be at worst case scenario. Um, you do see it skip a little bit. That's actually when the thermal's calibrating. Now what's interesting here is I've almost disappeared completely visually, but from the thermal, and you can see after that calibration, I'm still pretty visible there. Like you can, you can just see me sitting there. So what I'm gonna do then is actually set up the relf hide in front of me, just kind of hang it up off the trees. And oh, wow, okay. I, we kind of saw it for a second there. And I'm pretty sure I, I get it all set up and I'm kind of curious how this goes once I get it all in position. But I'm trying to hook it on one of those tree branches, which you can kind of see me doing in the bottom picture there. Okay, so there it's all set and wow, so take a look at that. You can't see anything visually or on heat. Like you pretty much disappeared. I'm pretty impressed with how well that works. All right, so then removing the actual thermal hide you can start to see me again. I kind of pull it off its original position. I want to try some different positions based off where we could put it. And as I move over, you can see me again visually and again through thermal. And what I'm going to do is kind of make a little cover here, I'm trying to make a little secret area that I could drape over the bushes and, and the trees here. Then I can actually sit behind it if I wanted to make a, my own little position that I could see out of or recon from that no one can actually see in from. So here I kind of take a moment and hang it over everything. You gotta kind of mess with it. I think I finally got it. Yeah, okay. All right, so yeah, I guess I'm still messing with it. All right, so we're just gonna skip ahead to me getting this all situated because it's apparently taking forever for me to actually hang this up here. All right, but again, we're kind of visual on the visual camera and thermal. You can definitely see us. Now, as I step back behind here to where we have everything set up, it's kind of, if I can get back there actually, it's kind of interesting as we, again, just completely disappear. So yeah, that's pretty impressive that we can't be seen visually or by thermal in this position, you know, having all our gear on. Yeah, that's pretty good. So then here I am coming back out from behind the thermal blanket. You can definitely see me in thermal, but I've definitely cooled off a lot being in the shade. So it's still easier to see me, but the height definitely makes you disappear a lot more than just in normal thermal view. And one thing interesting is that with the hide, we really disappeared from both the visual and the thermal spectrum. But I do think like the hot road is throwing off the way the actual heat camera is calibrated and makes it so we kind of disappear anyway. So let's move over so we don't have that hot road in view and see kind of what happens. All right, so here I wanna show you what it looks like in just the visual spectrum. So what I'm gonna do is actually set up the hide over this area so you can see what it looks like. I'll just speed up this portion so you can just see me setting it up. It can take a second, I just wanna make sure it's nice and covered up down the bottom and not looking all crazy. You do have to double it up to make it look right. So it doesn't look like a bed sheet, but uh, all right, I think that's good. I'm gonna go around the other side and speed this up again. And I had to fix that little corner. All right, going around the back side, just speed up until I see myself. Okay, there I am. And you can see me trying to weasel in through the woods back there. But, so take a look at that. So as you go back behind the hide in the visual spectrum, I mean, yeah, we know I'm there, but from just a standpoint of looking, it would be very difficult to see someone through that. The color matching is really, really good. I'm kind of surprised by that. Here we go setting up in the thermal though. The thermal cam was in the way of the last one, so I had to kind of split up the way we did it. So let me go around the backside. Again, we'll, we'll speed this up till we see my little legs cut through on the back end there. And I think I, I, think I just saw him pass over. Ah, there I am, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is come near the hide and you can kind of see my body coming towards the thermal hide and look how well you can see the top portion of me as we move through the brush and everything, just moving all the trees out of the way. I'm really easy to spot 
uh, particularly that upper side of my chest. And there's my face. Yeah, there's me. <laughs> hi, hi. And then I go underneath the hide and, okay, you, you definitely disappear. Now, the hide does have kind of a uniform box to it. I, I wish it did break it up a little bit more to look more like the panel on the right. Uh, seeing my face again, though, that's really surprising how well I just disappear underneath. Um, it does have that uniform look to it. So you can kind of see the difference. I kind of went back and wanted to show you what it looked like underneath. Now, you definitely disappear, but this is the difference when you have the hide and when you don't, kind of what it looks like visually. So, yeah, just so you're aware. So as you can see, you can definitely disappear from both visual and from thermal using the Eclipse. One thing to note also though, is staying near a hot source like hot rocks or a road helps you really hide from thermal also. All right though, let's see how this does when we test out at night with the IR signature. Okay, here's that same position at night and wow, okay. So all that really awesome camo and patterns kind of gets lost and I'm not quite sure what's causing that, but now it just kind of looks like a big sheet with some holes cut in it. Um, this is really easy to see, so I'm not quite sure how well it's gonna work in this application. Even setting it up further at a distance, it's harder to see, it kind of blends in, but it's just got this weird, somebody standing there with a sheet on them kind of look to it. And I hate to say, but it seems like it's actually easier to see with the Ralph hide at night than if you didn't have it. But I think some of the shade kind of helped the hide a bit to disappear. So let's do those same three tests in my yard and see how it does. It'll be a bit closer, so we're definitely gonna get some different readings. I'll also hide behind the hide at first, but then I'll also drape it over myself and wear it and see how effective that is. But just know it's not meant to be laid on you. It's, there's meant to be a gap between you and the hide itself. Okay, so here I wanna show you what it looks like just using nothing. So again, I have the regular camera on the bottom and then the thermal on the top. Thermal, super easy to see. <laughs> Visual, super easy to see. Just me waving at everyone again. So then what we'll do is we'll actually set up the thermal hide. Again, I'll just fast forward as we kind of drape this over this <laughs> big set of weeds we have here. Now, I will comment on how well that color pattern works with just regular vegetation. So now we're gonna hide behind here and again, I mean, that signature just disappears completely. Visually, I like the way the pattern works. I wish it broke it up a little bit more, like had some more like 3D look to it. But look at it thermal wise, you, you can barely even see me moving around behind it at all. I think at one point soon I pop my head up. Yeah, there I am. So look at the difference. Look at the difference in the heat signature that just gets lost completely. Um, and that's pretty amazing. You definitely blend in with the surroundings here. And here you can see me kind of stand up. I just want to show you the difference again, what it looks like normally in normal heat vision and then what it looks like with a thermal hide. It's pretty impressive. And again, so I want to try this wearing it. So again, this is what we look like when we're just wearing nothing. We don't have the hide on at all. So I want you to see what it looks like under thermal camera. Now we'll throw on the hide here. And again, this is not how it's supposed to be worn. This is just kind of a test of theory if you're wearing gear and your helmet. I, I would be worried that your head would actually be putting a lot of heat on the actual blanket, but the helmet may actually make this work. So, you know, this isn't ideal, but it actually does work pretty well. I'm just struggling a little bit to get it around my body. But look at it visually. You, you disappear. I'm kind of surprised how well it works on the thermal side too. Like, as I'm just sitting there... You don't see anything until I start to move around and then you start to notice something, you know, something's kind of weird going on there, particularly in the thermal. But as you just sit there, it's pretty novel. Something weird's going on, but you don't know what it is. Now, <laughs> now standing, it's just not meant to be used this way. I'd be curious if you could make one like this though. I don't know how all this works, but the difference in the body parts that are shown and not shown, that's kind of what I'm using as an example here of how well the thermal height's actually working. And then again, from the visual perspective, it doesn't work at all standing, but you know, in that kneeling position, you know, in that, you know, that rifle position, you'd be pretty invisible. And again, on thermal, like look at the difference here. That's me not wearing it. You can easily see me and then putting it back on I mean, the signature's there, but goodness, just 
barely. Um, yeah, I'm definitely impressed by how well this is working, particularly with gear on. I think, as I said, the gear is what's making it cheat because nothing's going through the helmet. There's nothing really touching my body except for on my shoulders. Um, as we talked about, standing, standing doesn't do anything. Uh, don't recommend that. It's definitely for kneeling. But look at the difference here again in wearing it and not wearing it. And we see when wearing it that the heat is a lot harder to hide when you're actually wearing it. But still, it's a whole lot better than having nothing at all. But let's wait till it's nighttime again and let's test the IR signature and see if we get the same results as before. All right, so again, here's our hide at night and it just completely loses that whole pattern, that really nice camo pattern that it has. And it just looks like, I don't know, just like a sheet draped over it. I can't imagine this would be super useful. This would catch my eye for sure if I was just walking around and I saw this. That would be my biggest concern with using this with anyone else with night vision on. But in this testing, I'm in full kit and just ready to go. I asked some friends for some help to see what would happen if you wore it in just regular situations. Like if you had to just bug out and disappear in whatever normal clothes you had on. So first with my buddy Oz, we're kind of showing this in the visual spectrum, just showing you what it looks like. It's a lot like what we tested before with just regular clothes on. You can kind of see the silhouette, but it does blend in well. I'm super close, probably 10 yards. So, you know, it's really impressive that it even does this well visually from this distance. But let's go test this out in the woods. So here we have the visual on the left and the IR on the right. And here you can see visually it's doing pretty well. IR wise, the woods are pretty cold and he's pretty warm. So he's still showing up a good bit and I'm betting draping it over himself isn't gonna do well cause it's gonna heat it up. But look at this visually. He just completely disappears even on the heat side. He's harder to see, um, particularly as he moves though, you can spot him, but he's definitely harder to see than not wearing it at all. I'm most impressed by the visual, how well that camo pattern works in that, just that forest with the light coming in. Heat wise, he's still sticking out a good bit. I don't know how much it's doing for him. I mean, it's way better than nothing. And that's kind of what I want to show you. Here's the difference between taking off and what he would normally look like. Okay, so it's making a bigger difference than I thought. That is actually pretty huge. All right, so what if we did the exact same thermal testing, but at night? I don't know. Let's try it. All right, so here we are testing the thermal camera at night. Now we're super close. We're on that deck again that we showed you earlier. And being this close with everything so cool, you can definitely see the thermal silhouette of the individual. I mean, look at the difference though when you see just him, but as the camera calibrates, it's pretty easy to see his silhouette. As we go a little bit further back, you know, it's way better than not having it. And as he sits still, that silhouette is pretty hard to see, but I'm, we're at what, 12 yards. Testing it at night back in the woods, we start to see that the thermal mitigation of it, you know, isn't really as high as you'd want to be, particularly at nighttime. And let me kind of show you why. And wearing it with regular clothes, as I talked about before, the heat is coming through your head. So it's actually warming it up. And as we talked about, standing just doesn't work well. It's just not designed that way. So I had him actually crouch down. And here again, it, it's just not the best to be worn. The body silhouette is easy to see. It would work a lot better to have it draped over something. But I want you to kind of just see here the difference when it's cold outside. Now, the individual silhouette is still pretty easy to make out just in the woods. Like even when it's doing well, it's still pretty obvious that there's some sort of odd shape there that just it catches your eye for sure. I'm going to say that. And yeah, you definitely, as you move, uh, it definitely gives you away. So you definitely have to sit still if you're going to wear this. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, nighttime, you need to be sitting as still as you can. But look at the difference when you take it off though. So I, I don't know, that, that's a huge difference still. And he can't see anything here, so it's funny to see him walk through the woods in the dark. Okay, so we did another test where we actually draped it over like a picnic table, just kind of show you the difference. And so here it's not on the body, but what happens is the thermal mitigation 
isn't enough to kind of hide the silhouette. So it's not breaking up the silhouette enough. He does kind of hide and it makes him similar to the trees and stuff. But as soon as he starts to move again, you can obviously see there's some sort of person or someone crouched underneath there. But here again, look at the massive difference it makes to like his normal body heat. So that's pretty crazy when you look at what you normally look like without anything on at all. So the thermal mitigation of the Relvhide struggles a bit more at night as everything around you is so much cooler than your body. But tell you what, do we wanna test IR one more time? <laughs> Let's do it. Again, back on the deck doing the same test as we did before. You know, we're just seeing the same thing over and over again. We lose that camo pattern. It really looks like we have a sheet with some holes cut into it that's just draped over and we're trying to hide behind it. So let's try it out in the woods, um, kind of see how this does and just like a normal application. So here we see Oz out in the distance and he's gonna put on the Relv Thermal Hide. And again, I mean, it's already has no pattern to it. It's just like a single uniform bright color. I, I hate to say, he just looks like he's going trick or treating or something. Um, the shape of him just looks like a ghost. It, it definitely catches your eye, <laughs> particularly when he starts moving. Uh, I would just be apprehensive to use this in nighttime. Even behind the tree, yeah, he's a little bit hidden, but any sort of movement just looks really wonky. Um, I would probably opt to just not wear this. I think you're easier to spot at night with the hide on <laughs> than off. So that's all of our testing, and I think we have what we need to make a good assessment. So let's go over the three different visual spectrums and then go over the pros and cons of each. So the first one we'll go over is the actual camo pattern as a huge pro in the visual spectrum. The Eclipse Hide has a fantastic camo pattern that can also be flipped over to give you some amazing color matching to various different environments. I was more than a little surprised as to how well the pattern just made the entire hide disappear in the woods. I'd say visually it's definitely effective, but one con I did find in the visual spectrum is that the actual material being a little bit light makes it kind of flow like a sheet in the wind at times. The wind can really get a hold of the hide and makes it look very unnatural when it does. This would certainly give your position away and the entire fabric would perform a bit better if it had a little more weight to it. But as it is, the Eclipse Hide can be folded and carried easily, so I don't know, there's a bit of give and take there. So then moving to the IR realm, the night vision side, I have to say the Relv Eclipse definitely struggles here. And I'm not sure if it's the dyes or the material itself, but the beautiful camo pattern is lost completely, and the entire hide looks like a large white sheet. This can make you stand out extremely easily in almost every night vision situation. So it's not IRR compliant, and I'd be pretty concerned about using the Relv hide against an adversary that uses night vision because of just the odd shape and how easily it is that you just stand out. All right, so then moving on to one of the other huge pros of the Relv hide is that thermal mitigation. In a warm environment, the Ralph Hide is able to mask your position and hide where you're at completely. It was easy to blend into various positions and break up the silhouette to such a degree as it became novel. But it did struggle a bit more as the sun went down and we moved into the night as everything started to cool off a little bit. It became much easier to see our subject as the thermal mitigation couldn't block enough of the heat or break up the silhouette enough to make our subject camouflaged. It was pretty easy to see them. So with the Relv Eclipse, you definitely defeat two out of the three visual spectrums. And while it has a few cons, having the hide on or around you is a ton better than wearing nothing at all, as it definitely drops off a lot of your heat signature. And an adversary would have to at least think twice as to what the heck they're looking at. Overall, I was really impressed by the Relv Thermal Hide and seeing this new type of advancement in gear. And it's kind of crazy how something like this in your hands would cause fits to even a military tier adversary. And I'm betting we're gonna see more of these thermal mitigation style devices. So I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes out to see if any of them can actually defeat all three visual spectrums.
but I hope this video on the Rel Thermal Hide was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You guys make all this possible where we can see all this cool stuff and actually test it out for you. I mean, heck, we have thermal vision. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you thought about the Rel Thermal Hide. All right, everyone, ball out. Why don't you just call Pulsar? Why do I gotta call him? Do you even realize how hard it is to edit with a mask on?